All right, 31, solve for x, okay. see what x is. And uh, like we said in class, we can treat this exactly like an inequality, or like as an equation with the one exception. If we multiply or divide on both sides by a negative, we will switch this in. So here's what I would do. I would subtract 3x from both sides. Okay, make sure that it stays exactly as unbalanced as it started. To 18x plus 7, so less than on this side. I don't have to put plus there. 16, I'll subtract 7. 18x equals 9. Less than 9. <laughs> and divide by 18. Point 0.5 x is still less than 1 half, less than 0.5. Why did I make it 2? What? Oh, oh, I thought it was 8. Okay. Yeah, that happens. Yeah, you get it kind of flipped around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is kind of messed up. First class, I'm just like a freshman. And, oh, oh man. Yeah. Oh, well done. I'm sure I can't. Oh. Were you serious? Conversation's over. Number 38. Let's do this. We've got, really, this is actually two inequalities in one. What two inequalities is this represent? Two is less than 32x and. Oh, x minus 3. Okay. <laughs> and then possible for something to be bigger than 2 and less than 6. But rather than solving both of these individually and then getting two separate inequalities, solve them at the same time. Solve them at the same time. Like if, we, if we did this as two different things, but at the same time we do plus 3 plus 3, we do plus 3 here and plus 3 here. So rather than doing all of that, since it's possible, with, because we can write and in between them, you can just put them together in one, add three here, add three here. That's like we're just solving this inequality. Add three here, add three here. It's like we're solving this inequality by itself. Five. What? Then is that like that you can solve? Is what, like this? This thing? No, no, this guy's above. Yeah. This? Yeah. This is like the equal sign, and this is also like the equal sign. So you take what's in the middle? Yeah. What do you mean you take it? Like, do you put like, what's added, subtract, and multiply, and multiply? Yeah. Or if it was something on the yeah. side, you just do it from the side so that we don't do it from the middle. It's like, it's like we're, for this one, we're kind of oh like ignoring all of this and we're saying, let's solve this inequality. Right? Are you following? Hello? Yes. You looking at you or are you looking at me? Uh, it's like we're ignoring that, and we're just solving this inequality. Well, this inequality would be x is less than or equal to 9. So then it's like, mm -hmm. you just do it both. Mm -hmm. okay. Because it's two inequalities. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Six plus three is 11. What? Did I see that? No, no. Oh, I got it. Okay. Uh, I got it. Yeah. Um, I don't know how to 
not just copy and paste and then and when the next thing I copy that I can't find the other thing that I copy. So I just look for that. Multiple <laughs> copy paste thing thing free. software free. Yes, yeah, stuff like that. Super kind of cool expert. stuff. Kind of think of the words that make it a unique search. Right and so part C, right in quality for elevations not in the montane zone. So quickly and so the question about C, we'll just go through A and B really quickly. So for an inequality of elevations that are in the lowland zone, here's the lowland zone. That's from 0 to 500. So any E elevation that's bigger than or equal to 0, but less than 500. By the way, why is this not less than or equal to 500? Because it goes 500. It goes 500. It goes 500. Well, Well, why can't I just say equal to 500? Why can't it be two, like from 0 to 500 and 500 is included? 500 is not. Montaigne, yeah, Montaigne. Because it says not the higher elevation, right? Include the lower but not higher uh -huh. elevation. So 500, yes, but well put, it belongs to the Montaigne zone. It doesn't belong to this zone here. The, the, the lower elevation belongs to that zone. Okay, uh, right inequality for elevations in the alpine and subalpine zones. So they're all together, and they happen to uh, like be touching each other. So they like share uh, an elevation. This this one's higher elevation is this one's low elevation. So we can just string it all together. This would be the lowest. This would be the highest. And you just go from lowest to highest. So 1400 is the lowest, and the highest is 2429. Go. All right, so part C, right in equality for elevations not in the montane zone. Well, here's the montane zone. All the ones that are not in the montane zone would be this one and these ones. Okay. So the thing is, it only just says four elevations, not for zones that are not the montane zone, but elevations. There are other elevations besides these ones and besides these ones. What I mean is, there are elevations below these low ones, and there are elevations higher than these high ones. Right? Are there elevations below zero? Yeah. What is zero? Sea level. Sea level. Are, there, are there places on Earth that are lower than sea level? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What does that really even mean? Yeah. How are you lower than sea level? Like the wind goes off and you can shoot. Yeah, yeah. Top five. Um, Down below the sea level. Yes. How do we measure sea levelness or, or elevation? The sea level is the standard, it's just zero, but anything could have been zero. Mount Everest could have been zero, right? But it isn't. Sea levels are good. Uh, worldwide, universal. Because it evens out. Yeah, because it evens out. So, what does it really mean, the elevation? Does it, how do we measure it? Elevated. From where? Sea. From the sea. But then, I guess what I'm getting at is to be negative okay. is to be closer to <laughs> the Earth's core. The Earth's core. Nailed it. The Earth's no. core. Like, oh. forget it. Oh, I asked like six questions. Yeah. Yeah. About his family. <laughs> 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 no, I just felt. I just felt. Participation counts, right? Right or wrong? Hey, what about Cindy? Oh, yes. <laughs> what about Cindy? She's in the tournament. <laughs> 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 I just myself. Can't have an eye. Okay, so there are elevations that are negative, that are below zero. 
just means that uh, we're, we're lower than the standard. The standard is, we could have picked the standard to be the lowest spot on Earth. Uh, but that probably wasn't decided when people started measuring elevations. We didn't know where the lowest point was. Uh, so anyway, that's kind of how we measure it, in theory at least. So we can have elevations that are below zero. So elevations could be less than zero. And we'll go less than zero because zero belongs as the lower elevation to the low rank zone. Uh, or, since it can't be both of these things at the same time, uh, we'll say it could be just anything bigger than 1,400. Bigger than or equal to 1,400. So if you're in either of those zones, where are you? Well, not in the montane zone, which is what I was asking about. Not in the montane zone. And that is all. Other questions? Yes. All right, what if I have less than 500 and then greater than 1400? Less than 500. Less than, oh, less than 500, not less than zero. x is on the right, and you might shade to the right, but that's not what this is saying. It's saying that x is less than 6. Yeah? Um, she's shade, but it's shade and arrow. Have you seen um, before? Let's try and shade it darker in the future, but that's fine. Situation, but 
not here. Okay. We are dividing, and a negative is involved, but we're not dividing by a negative, and that is when we would switch the negative sign, or switch the inequality sign. Careful. And one more. Just, just still solving. We need to distribute first. Qx minus h. And uh, plus minus two. Let's do that. I like to leave the x as positive. So if we do that, the x will be positive. Divide by 2 will still be on the left hand side, just the negative side. So then, what in the world did I do? I got 1. Pretty much the opposite of the correct answer. Okay, it's less. Why? Aren't you supposed to get x's on that side? Fail. Straight up fail. That's 4 problems. Score 20. Hand it back. Yeah. All right. so we'll, without losing the understanding of what a graph is, in other words, not just saying, oh, I put this here and I put that there and I connect the dots, how do we graph this? Draw a graph. Draw a set of axes. Yes. X and Y. X and Y. All right. So, okay, you're at good. Plug in what for X? Yeah. Zero. All right, I like that because... Because it's easy. Because it's easy. X, Y, zero for X. What do you get for Y? Three. 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 Obviously. Okay. What do we call that? Point? Y intercept. Y intercept. Oh, this is going to be the best Why? class ever. Okay, now what will we plug in for X next? Seven. Yeah, there we go. And what do we get for Y? Um, negative it's too hard to see. Yeah, negative two. We're going to cancel out the sevens. We're going to get negative five plus three. Negative two. Okay. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And negative two. Like that's the same as going down five and over seven. That's what we call the slope. Right? And that, the slope is important to understand and be familiar with, but it's not the crutch that we uh, always need in order to graph a line. If you, of course, if you don't have this T-chart, and, and all that kind of stuff, I'm not going to mark you wrong. You, you have graphed it correctly if you do this. But I do want you to be able to explain how what's going on there, it. how you could justify the y-intercept and the slope really quickly. Okay, it doesn't have to be this. You don't even have to think, oh, I'm plugging in 0 for x, and then I'm going to plug in 7. You can do the y-intercept and the slope, but don't lose this. Because, well, just don't. It's very important. Okay, <laughs> let's just say that. Okay. All right, so we've got this line. And... Uh, Come out beautifully so far. We graph this line. Graph this line. What do the points not really on this line, right? The points that are this line. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what are the points that make up this line? By choosing one of those points, what do they represent? What does that point represent? Right. Okay. So this point. Uh, get get specific. Tell me about this point seven negative two. Tell me what it tells me about this function over here. You put in um, seven for x and got negative two for y. Yes, exactly, exactly, exactly. So we put in seven. You got negative two. Now here is another way that we want to be able to think about these points, not just input and output, though that's very true, but also what's called a solution. Solution, solution to what? The equation. The equation. Solutions. Equation. Equations have solutions. Functions have input and output. Okay. This happens to be both of those things. It happens to be a function that you can put in things, get out things. It also happens to be an equation that you can solve, that you can find solutions to. How many solutions does this equation have? Infinity. Infinity. Infinite number of Name. solutions. Infinite. Okay. Infinite. Now, what about this guy over here? Also a solution? Yeah. Okay. So, if I were to 
take the x and y from this point and plug it the, the x and the y, then both sides will be equal, equal, equal to each other. Equal to each other. So that's pretty Whoa. quick and really important. If I plug in, okay, so let's go through the whole process. If I go to the line, I pick a point, quote, on the line, I put that x and that y in there, both sides will be equal. Okay. Now, what if I, okay, so I'm going to look at the same x, right, to compare. What if I choose this point? I'll tell you that the x is 7, I won't really get specific about what the y is. If I take that x and that y and I put it here, and this, for this and that x and this y, it'll be swayed. It won't be equal. What will I get since the x is 7? What will I get on this side? What? Negative 2, exactly. Because, I mean, that is the point. On the line, the points on the line make both sides the same. They make them equal. If we pick this point, I'll still get negative 2 on the right side, because I put in 7 for x, and we know that we'll get negative 2 for that side. And when I plug in this y, it won't be negative 2, and it won't be equal. They won't be up the same on both sides. So if I do pick this point, and I get negative 2 over here, how will the y compare to this side? The y of this point. Bigger. 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 It will be bigger. So this point, is it a solution to this equation? No. No. Is this a point, is this a point of solution to the equation? Yes. It is, because it makes both, both sides the same. But this point makes which side bigger? The y side. The left side? The y side. Very important. The y side. So is this point a solution? What is it a solution to? If y was greater than if y is greater than greater than. So it solves this inequality. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Can you find another point that solves this inequality? All the points above. This. All the points above this point. And this point, this point, this point, this point, this point, this point. All these points. Infinite points. Infinite number of points we could just like kind of shade over shade it all the way up any point above any point on that line does that make sense is all this whole line is made of points what's that that line shouldn't be solid it shouldn't no well i guess it kind of depends the line is all the solutions to drawing it in blue on purpose to this equation all the solutions to this equation are on the line or make up the line all the solutions to this inequality are above. above. The places where you will find a y that's larger than what you get over here. What do you get over here? Look at the line. That's what you get. Go to any x, any x, plug in any x, you'll get out this corresponding y. Go to this x, you get this y. Go to this x, you get this y. Right? If I don't want to get exactly both sides equal, if I want the y side to be larger, then I want to pick a y that will be larger than what I get when I plug in that x. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you may have done this before. We kind of, I think, previewed it in the last class. But it's really important that you've understood everything up until this point, that the line is made of points. Every point will solve the equation, meaning both sides will be the same. If I want one side to be not the same, greater than or, or less than, then uh, I have to pick a point from either above or below that line. Yeah. If you were just doing for the y is greater than negative 5 or 7x plus 3, mm -hmm. wouldn't you dot the line? Yeah, we'll talk about that. But for now, let's just go ahead and practice, see if everything's clicking uh, with everybody. Not just a select few. It sounds like it's going well. Let's just go ahead and do this. We have an equation, right? Equa the equation part is b equals 2, and we have an inequality that's the less than part. It's like two different things right, that we just kind of put together in one. So it's a 3 fourths x minus 5. Let's graph that inequality. All right, so we'll start, of course, with the y x axis. Um, Part will represent the equals. All of the points x, y, up 
point is an x and a y, that will make both sides equal. If I find all of the points that will, when I take that x and that y, that makes those two sides equal, and I plot all those points on the axes, what will I have? A line. A line? A line. A line is the thing that I will have when I find all of those points. Exactly. Still come to hell. <laughs> that make both sides equal, we'll have the line. Okay, to graph that line, we are familiar with it. Go ahead and use the shortcut, but not forgetting our roots, our proud heritage of plugging things in for x and getting things out for y. So we'll go up three and over four. Because I know if I plug in four for x, it'll cancel the denominator. I'll, I'll add three to negative five, and then I'll one, two, three, and get negative two. And since I know that all the points will make a line, you can now make all the points. Are you laughing? Okay. Thank you. Alright, so that's all of the points that are going to make both sides equal. All the other points everywhere else in the plane, here or here or here or here, will not make both sides equal. Right? The points down here will make them unequal. The points up here will make them unequal. If I look at the points down here, which side, when I take a point from here, which side will be bigger? The side with x in it, right? Because these are the y's that are equal to what you get when you plug in x. These are the y's that are less than what you get when you plug in x. And these are the y's that are greater than. These are equal, these are greater. So, since I want the y values that are less than what I would get when I plug in any of x, this shading is, just like the line, a bunch of points, an infinite number of points. It would, should be, yeah, just should be shaded completely black. It should black out half, half of the plane. That's half of an infinite thing, though. Anyway, it blacks out half of it, and the line blacks out that line part, and there you go. That, that shading, though it looks like there's gaps in between, it's only because I don't have time to completely black out this area. Okay. okay. Now let's talk about this. Greater than four six seven. George what Connor was asking about if we go down to negative seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I put a point right there. Now what does that point represent? Well, that's what it's called. What is, what's that point with its, with its coordinates represent? When x is zero. When x is zero. Mm -hmm. Then y is negative seven. Then y is negative seven, right? When x is zero, then y is negative seven. Or if x is zero and y is negative seven, both sides will be I don't want both sides to be equal, right? So, really shouldn't even have this point. You see what I mean? That point's not a solution to this inequality. No. The coordinates of this point are not a solution. Because, what does this point do when I take that x and that y and I plug them in there? Make makes both sides equal. I don't want them to be equal. I want them to be unequal. But it might be helpful to go ahead and graph this line so that we get a reference. Yeah, that's a barrier, a fence will for the region that we're supposed to shape. But like, what do we do if we just look at x is less than 4, just for an example? And I want to graph that. How do I show x is less than 4, but not equal to 4? Open circle, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Open circle, open circle at 4, and then just shade. So we can carry that over to the, to the two-dimension graph. And just make this an open circle. Okay. This won't fill that circle in. And 
end. Just I'll go ahead and use the uh, slope here. Four up four, two, three, four over five. Up four and over five, but not a closed circle. An open circle. Done. That is a point that is on the line, but I don't want to include that one because, well, it makes both sides equal, and I don't want both sides to be equal. Why do you want both sides equal? What's that? Why don't you want both sides equal? Well, just because it doesn't have an equals to is all. Okay. When I made up this problem, I didn't put equals to. So if I were to plot all of these points, I would get a line, right? But a line that I don't want to include, but a line that I do want to give me a reference point. So what do you think of, how could we represent a line that's made of a bunch of open circles? No. It's not a line, right? It's got it's some substance, but also emptiness to show us that it's not included. Like if you had a point and a point and then a dotted line, is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah that, I'm not going to oh, okay. fuss okay. over some, some dots. If you're right, and at least you don't have a dotted line. I'm just trying to show you the rationale behind this dotted line. It's not like the dotted line is the only way we could have represented that we don't want to include these points, but it works. Yeah. Okay. If you've ever taken an art class where you sketch a pencil, uh, probably you were told like, you know, there aren't really lines. Like there aren't lines in the world. They're just contrasting uh, hues and, and shades and tones. When they come together and they match up against one another, you have a, it's kind of like a line. So that's what we really have here. It's just a shaded area that stops right at this barrier. Okay. Uh, well, these are the points on this line are the ones that will, when we plug in the x and the y, make both sides equal. But we want the ones that make the y side larger. We want y values that are bigger than this stuff. So, what? Well, everything above, right? These points make it equal. This point right here will have a y that's bigger. This point right here will have a y that's bigger at this particular x value, and so on. And for every other point on the line, we want to pick all the points that are above it. What if what? Nothing. OK. You got it. That's good. I didn't shade it all. Oh. I remember these things go on forever, and so really, I don't know, it's, it's kind of hard to imagine it goes on forever. It's not like you get to the end of the, of the graph somewhere way up there and it comes to a point, and so we have this big triangle that's shaded in. It just keeps on going past that. It's just some nebulous shading that goes on forever and, and vertical and, and horizontal direction. Does that make all Makes sense? I could have just said, here, we graph the line, it's going to be dotted because there's not an equals to, and we're going to shade above because of well, something that might have seemed faster or easier. I wanted to get at why do we shade it that way. Okay. Um, So if I say y is greater than or equal to x squared plus 2, I would 
and then include all the points that make y greater than all that other stuff. Anything, any point here will make both sides equal, so any point above it will make y greater. So I change all of these points. Or if I change it to less than, less than, then everything below it. You're making it look like a clown thing that they wear at the beard. Remember when Carson used to do the jack in the box? He's still doing it? Okay, stay focused. So, this this parabola, that's what this is called, goes on forever and ever and ever, right? So there is a parabola above this area, right? way, way up there. We're shading below all yeah, it's of crazy. that. Crazy, holy cow! All of that. We shade just below all the points that are below because these points on the parabola, or that make the parabola, make both sides equal. You don't want them to be just equal. You want to include the ones where y is less than. So any time when y is greater than, or y is greater than or equal to, or y is less than, or y is less than or equal to, we can always just shade above. Shade above. Those are the y's that are bigger than the y's of the points on the graph. And these ones are below, right? These y's are less than. These ones are vertic y is vertical, so less than would be down below. So anytime it's set up with y on one side by itself, it's easy to pick where we're going to shade. Because y just needs to be either these y's that are bigger or these y's that are smaller. But if you set it up like this, then maybe there's a, a different way to look not quite clear. Should I choose the y's that are bigger, y's that are smaller? Why is it I don't know. It's y is not set up to be by itself. It's not alone on one side. So let's look at it differently. First, let's graph it. If you're forgetting, this will be a line when you graph all these points. Right. How do we easily find a couple of points on the line? Zero. Zero for x and zero for y. Zero for x, find y, zero for y, find x. Zero for x gives us? Two. Two, two. Y is 2. 0 for Y gives us 3 for X. So 0, 2, 3, 0. You might be thinking, well, you shouldn't put closed circles. See, you're technically right, but you should just dot. I don't want to make a big deal out of this. Just dot. So we'll dot the line because we know that we don't want both sides to be equal. Points on the line will make both sides equal, so we want to exclude them but also use the line as a, as a guideline. It's not a real line, it's a guideline. And then we have to ask ourselves, is it this half that's shaded, or is it this half? Well, the bottom half. The bottom. How do we left? Because it, you set it up and you had to, you eventually had to get to the point where you divide six by y, and since six is not a negative, it's gonna be y is less than 12. That was a lot. Well, okay. However you want to do it, I, I'm just going to share this with you. You could get y by itself if you want to, right? And, and subtract 4x divided by 6. I wouldn't take that long. But also, you know that it's either this area here or this area here. It's one of those. Agreed? Yeah. yeah. Like, in reality, that, that area must be shaded. Like, it's already shaded. We just can't see it. We're just trying to discover it, right? So, like any good scientist, we can take a sample and test it and see, like, is it from? that shaded area? Or did I pick a point that's not from that shaded area? Right? So I can pick this point. This point might be in the shaded area, and it might not be. If it winds up making this true, then we picked a point that happened to be from the shaded area. If it winds up making it not true, we picked a point that's not from the shaded area. And why would I pick this point? It's the easiest one. Zero for x and zero for y all at the same time. And you might say, wait, I didn't think you could put in 0 for x and y, but right? Because we were trying to get both sides to be equal. Now we don't want them to be equal. So we can. And we'll see, well, we know it's going to be not equal. But how will it be not equal? Will it make this true? Will this side be smaller? Or will yes. It, it will be smaller because we put 0 and 0. 0 is less than 12. So it was true. So this point must be from the shaded area. So we just fill in the rest of that shaded area. If this was 4x plus 6y is greater than 12, well, then that point wouldn't have worked. And what we would have been doing is we would have taken a sample from the not shaded region. 
three to shade the other. Okay, that makes sense? Yes. Okay, so give this one a try. Um, So I have chosen to plug, because I'm looking for the, for the line, so I do want the points that make both sides equal. So we'll plug zero of them for x and solve for y. Zero, negative two will make both sides equal. Uh, say for zero for y and three for x, three for x and zero for y will make both sides equal. So I have two points on the line that I can connect the line with a solid line, the points of the solid line, because equal to, also equal to, not just greater than. So, a little simple thing to do would just be to pick a point, see did that point come from the shaded region or did it come from the not shaded region? I'll pick zero, zero. I would always pick zero, zero unless, what? If it's on the line, then hey, that's not gonna work. Right? That's one that will make both sides equal. It won't tell me anything about whether it makes both sides not equal. Nailed it. Oh, I didn't catch it. So pick zero, zero, plug in zero, and zero, and with zero, is that greater than 18? No. no. It's not. So our shade, we must have picked a point that's from the, the blank area. It doesn't have any solutions. Wait, this, this one's a solid line. That's right, because it could be equal to, and that would be just fine. So if it has oak, Okay, so that's what we call inequalities in two variables. X and Y, those are the two variables. Okay. So we have inequalities on a straight line, that would be just one variable, two variables, we need two number lines working together in two dimensions. Any questions about any of that? Because we're gonna go on to absolute values. All right. Let's see. How familiar we are. Absolute value of four, what's that? Four. four. What's the absolute value of negative four? Four. 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 Okay, so we, sounds like the chorus of people understanding what absolute value basically is. It's just a distance from zero, right? If I'm at four, I'm four away from zero. If I'm at negative four, I'm still four away from zero. That's the distance from zero. This is the count as possible. What if I say that the Absolute value of x, well, what's the value of x? X. 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 We don't know. We don't have anything to call it, right? So if I say the absolute value of x is 8, then what is x? 8. eight. eight. Four. Four. eight. eight. Uh, good. x is 8, or x is negative 8. Right? Can't be both, but it can be one, of, one or uh, the other of those. Well, there's the basics of solving an absolute value equation. There, that's an equation, an absolute value of some mystery number is equal to eight. So that mystery number, the stuff inside of the absolute value could wind up being eight, or wind up being negative eight. Can you just put x is equal to eight, comma negative eight, would that work? Yeah, or you could do plus or minus eight. That's like an understood thing, plus or minus means it could be the positive thing. Uh, with square roots, yeah, we do that too. When we're solving the square, when we're solving those kinds of equations. I don't get that. You don't get that? What? No. Oh. <laughs> okay, so let's, uh, but, well, but one more thing before we like solve a more complicated equation. The absolute value of x is equal to negative 5. What is x? 5 or negative 5. 5 or negative 5. No. No, nothing. Nothing. Yeah, take note. The, square, the absolute value of 4 is 4. The absolute value of negative 4 is positive 4. It, what can you negative. never get over here? Negative. You can't ever get a negative. An absolute value is almost defined as a doesn't positive exist. number. doesn't exist. Imaginary. Well, what are we trying to do with this equation? So to the next? Solve. Solve it. Yes, solve. So if we solve it, if we solve it, what have we found? The answer. 
So the solution to this has <laughs> no, solution. no solution. Oh, I got that one. No solution. You want to have it. By one point. Yes. Okay, no solutions to that equation. So let's set up a, a, another equation and just, you know, ramp it up slowly, slowly until we're solving some pretty cool equations. How about like 2x <laughs> is equal to 16? The absolute value of 2x is equal to 16. Well, now the stuff inside the absolute value is not just x, it's 2 times x, but still the idea is the same, isn't it? Yeah. Either this stuff inside the absolute value could be this stuff, so all, all of this stuff, yeah. 16. Oh. Oh, right, right. Or, or negative 16. Or negative 16. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the stuff, right, inside the absolute value. So that stuff comes out to be 16. The absolute value is 16. If that stuff comes out to be negative 16, then that stuff, no uh, then the absolute value of that is still 16. Really, what we're saying here is that when I plug something in for x and I multiply by 2 and I get negative 16, it's inside absolute of the absolute value. So when I take the absolute value of negative 16, it's oh. still positive 16. So it could be plus or minus negative 8. Plus or minus negative 8? Plus or minus 8. So if I solve this one, x equals 8. If I solve this one, x plus equals 8. It would be. I meant to. That's just a funny thing. I was listening to a podcast the other day. Have you heard? Uh, have you heard the word irregardless? It's not a word, right? Regardless is a word. Irregardless would just be canceling out that word. Irregardless would mean with regard. Regardless means like all those details they don't matter. Regardless of all that, this is my decision. Irregardless would mean without, not. Regarding negative, negative, <laughs> negative. Delta. 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 So I was listening to a podcast. It was actually Bill Nye. Anybody know? Oh, yeah. 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 The very first thing he said Duh. was just irregardless. Oh which my! Isn't even funny. <laughs> Triple negative. It's back to what regardless means. Canceling out the canceling out, so it actually means regardless. Anyway, I'm this irregular. <laughs> I'm this irregular. Yeah. So let's uh, set up another one. Three x minus four. The absolute value of that is equal to 13. Oh, this isn't going to come out to be good, I don't think. But. Well, that means, remember, there's stuff, like this, this, this whole blob here is inside of the absolute value. When I take the absolute value of that stuff, I get 13. So all that stuff could be 13, not 14. Three x minus four could come out to be positive thirteen. When I take the absolute value, I get thirteen. Or three x minus four could be equal to negative thirteen. All that stuff could be negative thirteen, and then we solve both equations. X is equal to seventeen. X is equal to seventeen thirds. Or three x is equal to negative nine, and x is equal to negative. You could have made it work out if you made it plus 4. Plus wow. 4? Yeah, that's why you had to minus 4 from 13 and divided 9 by 3. Would it work, would it work over here, though? I made mean, a negative 17. You would have had just the opposite of that. So x is 17 thirds. That will work because when I plug 17 thirds in here, 3 times 17 thirds is 17. Minus 4 is 13. Absolute value of 13 is 13. Negative 3 works. I plug negative 3 in there. Negative 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. Minus 4 is negative 13. And I take the absolute value of negative 13, and it's 13. So both of those work. Make sense? I was thinking about this stuff inside the absolute value. Could be the positive, or could be the negative. The only time that doesn't work is when the other side is negative. That can't be. It's not possible to take the absolute value and get a negative number. So here I'll give you an absolute value equation to take on yourself. Completely send you out on, on, an, on an ice blow by yourselves. What 
Is there something we should do? Minus two. Yeah, we subtract two from both sides. Now we can do the, you know, it equals the positive, equals the negative. But until we subtract that two, it'll be hard to deal with. We'll subtract two first. And now we have absolute value equals a number, and it is a positive number. That's pretty important. It equals five. And then we can go. Then we can move forward. So again, uh, we get it down to where the absolute value of some stuff equals five. So that stuff inside the absolute value will come out to be five. And if that happens, take the absolute value of that stuff, and the absolute value of five is five. If all of this stuff comes out to be negative five, if I find some value of x, that I do all this work to and I come out with a negative five, then a negative five will be in here, and the absolute value of negative five will be five. So we'll add both sides, three fourths of x equals 14, multiply by four thirds, and multiply by the reciprocal, so then three cancels three, four cancels four, we have x equals, then we simplify it here, so we have 56 over three, x is 56 over three, we're done there, nine, Plug them in. If we plug in 56 over 3, we'll come out with blah, blah, blah. All this math happens, and we can wind up with 5. 5. And the absolute value of 5 is 5. We take 16 thirds, we plug that in there, we do all the math, we come out with a negative 5 here, and the absolute value of negative 5 is 5. Absolute value of 9 minus 2x is equal to 10 plus x. We're not going to be able to probably just jump in and do this on our own. We can discuss it a little bit. If this, were, if this were like plus 3x three, three right there, we would just do 9 minus 2x equals 10 or 9 minus 2x equals negative 10. But this, the idea is still the same. I think this, this part is pretty obvious. 9 minus 2x could be equal to the exact same thing as 10 plus 3x, right? Yep. If this comes out to be 7, and this comes out to be 7, the absolute value of 7 is 7, right? But if this comes out to be 7, then this could come out to be negative 7. Right? So these could be exactly the same. They could be exactly opposite of each other. So 9 minus 2x equals negative. 9 minus 2x is equal to just, you know, the opposite of that, of negative times that side. And it's all set up. You distribute that negative. You're on your way. Yeah. Give me a couple moments to work on that. How can it both be negative? How can it both be negative? I mean, uh, it can seem kind of weird, but I mean, we're just trying to figure out what x would be worth, and we're subtracting it, right? Yeah. So uh, maybe the thing that we, like, we don't want it to be equal to just a number. We want it to be equal to the quantity with x in it, right? So it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be a positive and a negative number for x. It just we come out to the positive or the negative of this. It's kind of hard to. Uh, Um, but here is the thing. Here is the thing. Um, we need to test these out. Okay? We need to see if we have any what's called extraneous solutions, meaning solutions that don't make any sense. And the only time you'll need to test, you know, check your answers, is uh, one, if you want to be sure you did the work correctly and you found the right solution, so just go ahead and check it. 
But the, the time that we could come out with solutions, like we do all the work and we come out with a number, nothing seemed to have gone wrong. The only time that we need to check that is if there's an x on this other side that's not in the absolute value. Let me show you what happens sometimes. Because we, we take away the absolute value and we, we kind of ignore it for a second, uh, we could wind up kind of messing stuff up. Here's what can happen. We try, let's say, test out negative 19 for x. So we plug it all in, 2 times negative 19, that equal to 10 plus 3 times negative 19. So we get 10 minus uh, 57. I just know that that's 10 minus 57. Does that, do you think this is, is there something out here or something's wrong? Yeah, because it can't be a negative. Yes, this absolute value cannot come out to be a negative. 10 minus 57 is negative 47. I bet you'll get 47 right here, right? I bet you'll get 47 right here. But the absolute value of 47 is not negative 47. It's positive 47, okay? So where we kind of stripped away and ignored the absolute values for a second, some of the information got lost there, and so we need to go back and check the solutions that we found. And maybe only one of them will work, maybe both of them will work, maybe neither of them will work. It's impossible to pick an x that will make both sides equal to each other when one of them has to be positive. Like it has to come out positive, maybe the right side would have to come out negative. So just always check, this one turns out not to work because it's not possible to take the absolute value and get a negative number, which this side is. So just say, that doesn't work. Try one fifth, try negative one fifth. Negative one fifth, not positive one fifth. It'll work out, right? Just to save you the time for this particular example. But sometimes you'll try both of them and they'll both work. Sometimes you'll try and one will work. Sometimes you'll try and neither will work. What happens when neither of them work? We just do the same thing as this front page and say no solution. No, no solution. Okay. We found the two numbers and the only possible two numbers that could possibly at all work and neither of them work. It means the equation could never be true. Is what the, I mean, that's what saying no solutions means. This equation can't ever be true. Um, that will do it for our absolute value stuff. Yeah. Graphing inequalities in two variables, solving uh, absolute value some equations. Um, and we didn't get to that yet, so we got these three here. Is scheduled to come out during the day. Can move that up though.